Greetings. As you can see, I've got something here on my shoulder. This is related to that car accident that I've done a video on. Actually, I may have done even two or three on it uh, back in February. And I'm going through a process now where I'm working on relieving the pain. And one of the recommendations I got is from a radiologist friend of mine. Been in healthcare a good long time, and I know a lot of different therapists and whatever. And he recommended that I put 20 minutes of heat on my shoulder and then wait 20 minutes and then put 20 minutes of cold on it and then try to do that you know every other hour now I haven't been able to stick to that kind of plan because you know what I got a lot of things going on that just doesn't work still this has helped a lot and I'm using this to help me lead into this topic today of insurance you know one of the best things about having insurance is that it helps you to overcome financial difficulties when certain things happen. For instance, I pay for the highest level of car insurance. I don't have any discounts. I don't have a deductible or anything. So when I had this accident and it was a hit and run, I haven't had to pay for anything. I didn't have to pay to have the car towed. I didn't have to pay to have it fixed. Nothing. I had nothing that I had to worry about. And then when I decided to file a claim for the accident for uh, pain, nothing. I have not had to pay anything. Now, I'm not sure if every state has that, but if you live in a state that has that, I'm going to tell you that maybe you can decide to skimp on car insurance a little bit instead of going to, like, I have no deductible, maybe $100 because every bit that you can put down on it as far as deductible, if you want to pay out of pocket, you save a nice little chunk of change. But you never know what's going to happen. And <laughs> I'm just letting you know that you don't want to take certain chances like that. A friend of mine has been in three car accidents, three hit and runs. Actually, that's not quite accurate. Two hit and runs, one where the other person had no insurance. And it might as well have been a hit and run because his insurance covered everything. So he didn't have to pay anything. But still, if he had not had as good insurance as he has, then he'd have had, had some out-of-pocket payments as well. I don't know what's going on with my throat. <laughs> Maybe it's this thing. <laughs> In any case, that's car insurance. But let's talk about health insurance because some of you know I'm a healthcare finance consultant and I've been in a good long time. And one of the things that I've had to work on because I've had people who reported to me doing this is collections. And collections is rough because healthcare is the one business industry where people get services first and then get billed for them later on. If you have insurance, we will bill your insurance and see what the balance is after that. If you don't have insurance, you're probably getting that bill within a week. And it can be really high. As an example, for a large hospital, it is not irregular to get a bill from an emergency room visit of upwards of $5,000. Now. I think that's sacrilege if you want to know the truth, but they can claim costs. And, you know, in a large city, they're going to have bigger costs. Larger hospitals have bigger costs than smaller hospitals. But a smaller hospital, you could get a bill at least $1,500, depending on what you went in there for. And people go in for the weirdest stuff. Now, if you have some kind of insurance, then most probably you're going to have a smaller payment, you know, some plans are really good, so you pay nothing for emergency room visits, but some you might have to pay 15 to $50. Really, let me tell you, if you have to pay for your insurance for a year, and say it costs you $500 a month, and you go to the emergency room, and you get off paying $50, you know what, you've done well. Um, some people will say, well, you know, what if I just wait and see what happens if I get a $5,000 bill? Who has $5,000 just sitting around? I mean, there are some people who do. I don't have $5,000 sitting around. I have $1,000 maybe sitting around, but I don't have the other. But what happens if you have an insurance plan with a high deductible, for instance, what happens is you don't actually end up paying the actual bill. In other words, if you get charged $2,000, just say you get charged $2,000. If you have insurance, your insurance has already negotiated with whoever that insurer is or that uh, uh, provider is 
to accept a certain dollar amount of pay. So they write everything else off. Well, if you have that insurance but you have a high deductible, they still will adjust it down to this other level. So for instance, I go to a diabetes center um, and those bills, I, I go every six months and the bills usually come out to be around $400. But what comes out of my pocket is around $160. Now that's still a lot of money to a lot of people, but there's still this big difference between $400 and $160. And if I'm going twice a year, that's $800 versus $320. Frankly, I will take that all the time. And I'm older now, so I see a podiatrist, I see my regular doctor, I, you know, I see an eye doctor because of my diabetes, I have issues with my eyes, and I get discounts on all of that. I get big discounts on my medication. I didn't realize this, but it turns out um, one of the medications I take is actually $150. You know what I pay? Nothing. Why do I pay nothing on this particular medication? Because they were giving it to me in three month doses and I was paying $10. And I asked them one day about it and they said, well, you know, we can give it to you in 30, 30 days and it'll cost you nothing. I said, what? Really? <laughs> I said, who came up with the three month doses? Because I never asked. I just gave them a script. So you can actually save a lot of money if you're doing something with medications. I'm just saying that you know you have all these things that happen now my deductible is seventy five hundred dollars a year and that's pretty steep and I haven't reached that but what if I had been in an accident what if I was one of those guys who goes and plays softball on the weekend and I tried to slide in the second base and I tore up my knee those bills can get upwards of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars but my deductible is seventy five hundred yes that's still pretty high but what's probably going to happen is that they're going to send the bill to my insurance my insurance would say based on the codes we're not getting into that right now because you're not going to understand it but anyway based on the codes this is how much we would have paid on that you have to adjust everything else off and i'm getting that bill most probably i'm going to end up getting a bill around twenty five hundred dollars yes i'm going to have to set up a payment plan for twenty five hundred dollars but it's still a lot better than ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars that's just amazing stuff if you ask me yes you have to pay something monthly to get that kind of coverage I understand but if you can do that you just never know all it takes is one big accident you didn't even have to really really big accident say that you go to a doctor and you discover that you've got some kind of cancer and they want to start chemotherapy chemotherapy is expensive stuff if you don't have insurance you're probably not getting it because hospitals don't have to give that to you because that's not considered an emergency situation. Yes, it's life-threatening, but it's not an emergency situation. You have insurance. Yes, you're still going to owe something out of pocket, but there's going to be a limit to how much you're going to owe with today's insurance. If you're working for a big company, actually, if you're working for a hospital, if you're working for some company that offers insurance, it's smart to get the insurance and pay for it. If you don't, work for a company that pays for insurance. I'm in New York State so we can buy it through the exchange. There's still the Affordable Care Act in a lot of states across the country. I know that man in Washington, the orange guy, has been trying to cut it. But let's face the fact here. Rich people don't need it. <laughs> the rest of us need to have some kind of protection for our health. And it just makes sense to have insurance. The final piece is life insurance. Now, I will own up to this. I didn't have life insurance until I got married, and I was married, I think, what, seven years before I got it? And I probably should have got it even before then. Reason being, I got uh, diagnosed as being diabetic the same year I got married. Had I started life insurance a lot earlier, it would have cost me very little to pay for it. As a matter of fact, if I'd gotten a, I think it's a whole life plan, way back then, had I thought about it, I would actually have like money that I could use for my retirement or something like that. If I wanted to do something special, I could borrow money off of that and just say, hey, give me some of that money. You know, it's a great insurance, I mean, a great savings plan. <laughs> it's a great savings plan, and it's not really the worst thing in the world. I know there are going to be some people who say, yeah, you don't need that if you're not married or you don't have any kids, whatever. I'm going to tell you, 
it's something that you should at least look into. I wish I had looked into it. As it is now, um, the cash value of my insurance policy, because like I said, I pay, uh, I pay a big monthly thing because I'm diabetic. But the cash value of my policy is somewhere around $250 because I started so late. I mean, that's just how it is. I also started with a term plan instead of a whole life plan. That's a totally different animal. Term basically says that it goes to a certain point. Like if I hit 70, if I have term, I hit 70, no sense in paying anymore because now it's not worth anything. It's just gone. There's no money. <laughs> That's one of those things that you do where if I passed away at 65 or 66, then whoever the beneficiaries would get whatever the amount of the insurance plan is. Whole life is where you save it. The things you learn, the things you need to check out. I talk about the oddest stuff on this channel, don't I? Anyway, think about insurance. Think about getting better plans if you can afford it. Or if you can't, get the plan you can afford. Get something. Always have something. And by the way, in the United States now, if you have insurance, you get one free physical a year. You know what? It's better to have something than nothing. My name is Mitch Mitchell. I've had this conversation. Y'all let me know what you think. Except for Peter, who's over in, in Australia, because I know you guys don't have to worry about this. <laughs> you take care.